All right, how about a little time for some inspiration? How about a little time for feeling motivated and put love into action? Richard Barr is my in-studio guest. He um, founded the social ministry organization Threshold to New Life with his wife, Carla. And this organization helps homeless or people who are recently have ex- recently experienced homelessness um, to try to obtain or keep their housing. So he is a working nonstop uh, helping the disenfranchised and the people living on the fringe of society. Richard, welcome back. Thanks for having me back. Bill. Yeah. Appreciate now, it. you're leaving from here to go serve dinner tonight um, under a bridge outside in Minnesota. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Why not? And you got a big smile on your face. <laughs> this is I who I wait. haven't. I know. I know. That's true. Yeah. I know. But you do this every day. I mean, you've served breakfast every morning, don't you? Um, I don't personally I know, serve personally. breakfast, but we do have uh, over 40 volunteers that do that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And you're there a couple mornings a week, aren't you? At least usually? a couple mornings a week, mm-hmm. yeah. And yep. you arrive at 4, 4.30? 4 4.30. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so wait, I'm still waiting for you to take me up on the invitation. Well, I plan to. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Let's do it. Yeah. So um, when you do this or your crew does this, how many will show up for food? We have probably as few as 80, maybe as many as 125. So we figure we serve about probably 40,000 meals a year. Okay. Now this dinner you're going to be serving tonight, um, tell me what that's going to look like, feel like, and when the, the men and women who are homeless come under this bridge hoping to get a warm meal, which you'll provide, what kind of conversation do you have with them? Yeah, well, first of all, let's clarify. I want to give props to where they're due. So there's a, a little 501c3 called Project 68. And so Project 68 is actually the one that sponsors this dinner. So okay. Carl and I are kind of one of the one many of the volunteers that step awesome. in and help with this. Okay. So. Um, yeah, Adam and Christy Becker do a, a wonderful job with that. So in terms of the population, um, there's people that camp out, that stay outside. There'll be people that will be coming from shelters, uh, couch surfing. Uh, we'll have some alumni, you know, people that are housed now that just, they come back for the fellowship. I mean, we're we're friends, right? Um, that's, a, that's a potluck kind of a format. So uh, my love, lovely wife, Carla, she's got a whole bunch of, I think, tater tot hot dishes, nice. some sort of nice. Minnesota-type fare for mm-hmm. cold weather. Uh, got like four trays of that, and there'll be a variety of other people that'll be bringing things. And so we'll set up a table under the bridge, and we'll serve, and we'll eat, and then we'll meet at the Devani's on um, uh, 13th and Hennepin, and we'll have a little Bible study tonight. Nice, so we'll finish up nice. about nine. So you've written a couple of books. I've gone through both of them. One is called Amazed. And the way the humanity of Jesus matters, and the other one is called those people, the true character of the homeless. Now, Christians have historically been that group that has stepped in the gap, right? And a lot of people are now thinking about the holidays that are coming up and Thanksgiving and what can we do as a family. And is it, it, it sometimes takes a lot of um, push to get people into that place where they set their alarm at 430 and go help you serve breakfast. Yeah, we actually have a remarkable number of volunteers that will show up for us over the holidays. And then it ends up being a drop off. But, you know, I never, I never, um, I guess I don't judge people for that. It's like, hey, I showed up the first time too mm-hmm. once. So you never know when it's somebody that's going to hook into somebody. And um, I usually offer to have people come back more than once. And I get one or two responses. I'll either get kind of a blank stare and they kind of go, yeah, sure, which means no. <laughs> Or they'll be like, no, sign me up, man. I'm in. Like, That's what, cool. What day do you need me? You That's know? cool. Let's talk about the thinking that many people have today on homeless and homelessness. I mean, we get, we see all the time. And, you know, you inspired me the last time you were here um, to have um, materials on hand. So I went to one of the hmm. big box stores and got uh, several dozen pairs of socks okay. and stashed them in my back seat of my car. And then usually I will go up and when somebody is asking for money at the corner and I'm in my car, that's usually where they try to hit you up, Mm -hmm. right? Right. I will roll the window down, greet them warmly, say, I've got a, you know, a couple of bucks for you and a pair of fresh socks. If that is something you're... Well, it's amazing how much they love the cash and the socks. Right. And they will usually tell me how grateful they are that... I talked to them, I made eye contact with them, and Mm -hmm. I smiled at them because they said, you have no idea how many people will not make eye contact with me, and I'm a human being. 
I remember when I heard that, I just get choked up thinking about it. Yeah, it's a heartbreaking thing. I've had, it is. I've had, uh, I've had many, many people tell me that that uh, they've said, "What, what would you, how would you feel if you spent all day long with people trying not to look at you?" Yeah. You know, it's 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 kind of the simplest form of humanity is to make eye contact with another person. To but then share people that, think if I make glance. eye contact, then I'm going to have to respond to them, and I'm going to have to either wave them to say no, I don't have money, or they they just look at their phone or they do something. You know what I mean? It's yeah. It's easy and to so avoid. our approach is really to encourage people to anticipate that you'll encounter somebody that's in that situation, and to kind of think about that and have a little bit of a plan. That way, when people look away. It's typically because there are, they don't know, well, like, what should I say? Well, like, what do you say to a homeless person? Or they might be afraid that um, they might be asked for something and then they don't want to give cash or whatever because mm-hmm. they've been told not to. But if you anticipate that you're going to run into panhandlers, well, then you can be kind of equipped and ready. Right. You know, in terms of your response, you can be more confident in that. And then you can treat them with dignity. Mm-hmm. So let's... Um talk about some of the ways that we can be much more effective i mean there's there are things we can be we can do to be prepared first of all right but what are the best words the best things to be ready to say to somebody uh i usually uh, and and first of all i should qualify i mean you have to be comfortable doing this i mean apparently you are i've had a number of of ladies say Gee, I just don't know if I want to roll down the window oh, for a that. guy or whatever. And no, that's... So I would never encourage anybody if they're not comfortable doing that. Um, but for me personally, what I do is I'll, I look them in the eye, roll the window down. I might extend my hand. I'll tell them my name. <clears throat> they may offer theirs. They may not. And I'll just say, hey, you know, I've got something to bless you with today. And I, um, and I hope that you really get, you know, what you need today. Um, I carry some little tracks uh, that I'll give a, like a McDonald's gift card. I'll have tape to it. And, nice. Um, I give them the track. I say, Hey, here's five bucks on the card for you. And a little message from my boss. And so it's kind of a little levity thing and they'll look at it and then they'll kind of smirk like, Oh, okay. I get it. You know, oh, so you're one of those Christian guys, huh? <laughs> <laughs> one, of, one of those Christian guys. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, um, it's difficult for us to sometimes just put our arms around because we, we think, well, how is a couple dollars going to make a difference in their day? And don't they, what they really need to do is go get a job. And I'm sure we come to some conclusions that we can justify as we're sitting in our car. We do. Yeah. And, uh, the reason I wrote the last book, those people was out of 12 years of experience of dealing with people that have been in homeless situations and how surprised I really was and how wrong I was about so many people. Say more about that. So the reason people are homeless, there's a myriad of reasons why they're homeless or why they're living in a homeless shelter. And just because you don't have a permanent address doesn't mean you're not somebody that has a great capacity to love other people or exhibits tremendous patience or is somebody that has great tenacity. Um, I met so many people with such great character, like, and I'm not trying to be overly self-deprecating, but like way better people than me. Mm -hmm. But yet uh, I've got a car and I've got a house and, you know, whatever. And, and, and they didn't. And, um, it just really made me start appreciating people and thinking, you know, the, the don't judge a book by its cover sort of a deal. And, um, and many of these people have become uh, very good friends of mine. I mean, they, we, we spent holidays together. We, call each other we uh when i'm downtown or i'm in a shelter i mean i'm always looking for them Mm -hmm. um these are people you have befriended on the street yeah and then you have them at your house for holidays absolutely yeah yeah absolutely that's wonderful why why wouldn't you of course not no of course not yeah that's wonderful yeah because they don't have a place to go and you open your home and you invite them in and we enjoy each other of course sure um i think I think it was Billy Graham that said, um, imitating Christ is opening the door to friendship. Sounds like that's what you're doing, Richard. Well, I don't know. We're just trying to love, <laughs> just trying to love each, each other, right? I yeah. mean, that's, that's really what it's about. Yeah. So yeah. I'd love to hear a story, and know you have one, of someone that you met that was homeless that you were able to help find shelter and are now showing up at these alumni events. You're talking about one person in well, particular? No, 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 You're no. saying in general? In general, yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, these stories are so interesting. Yeah, we have both at both at our breakfast and then at the Project 6-8 event uh, that we have on Tuesday evenings. 
we'll have any number of people that will come back that are now housed. Um, you know, I, I, I always say the food is the excuse for the fellowship. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you think about any other kind of gathering that we have or meetings, uh, how many times is the food involved? Answer, almost always, right? So, I mean, if you want people to show up. And if it was just, uh, hey, let's have a bunch of Christian people show up at 5 o'clock in the morning in a homeless shelter, not a whole lot of people would get up. But if you serve a meal, they do. And through that, that gives us an opportunity to be able to make connections and build relationships. And then through those relationships, that's what gets people coming back. And it's like the old saying, you know, they don't care what you know until they know how much you care. Right. So that's really what we do is we exhibit care by meeting a basic need, and it gives us the gateway to be able to create relationships with people. So I'll pretend I'm this generic person that's asking you this generic question, okay? <laughs> so, so Richard, it must be really rewarding to work with the homeless. Uh, you know my answer, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yeah. I do know your answer. Sometimes it is. Uh, sometimes it's heartbreaking. Sometimes it's uh, frustrating. Um, I've... I've bald on my way home. I've shaken my fist as I've been going home. I've wondered, does this even matter? Um, but at the end of the day, it's it's really not about me. It's about being faithful. Uh, it's and it's about faithfulness. And so what? what and I'm not, I'm I'm a long ways from perfect at this, but I just try to suit up and show up, and I just try to be faithful to the promptings and the calls that I get. Uh, and I don't get them all right. That's what I aim to do. Mm -hmm. Would you say that there is a higher amount of mental illness on the streets right now in terms of homelessness? As compared to? As compared to, you know, I don't know, since you started doing work with homeless. Um, It always seems like the the question that's hmm. out there is, you know, if you're at a busy intersection and there's someone, I don't think even most people would feel too afraid to roll down the window if it's a busy intersection. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think the idea that this person could have some mental illness scares people. Yeah, I don't know if there's more chem dep or mental illness than when I first started, but I would say is there more than kind of the general population? Possibly. Um, But then again, as a society, we haven't chosen to care for those people either. Uh, If you're mentally ill or you struggle severely with alcoholism or chemical dependency to the point where you've lost everything, your options are to be incarcerated in some fashion or to be homeless. I mean, if there's not a family member that's willing to step in your gap, you know, the gap that you have in your life, uh, those people are really just left behind. We don't have, you know, when you and I grew up, there were the mental hospitals, there Mm -hmm. were things like that. Uh, We don't have those things anymore. So, yeah, so there's a fair amount of mental illness, which doesn't mean that those people are dangerous you know they might seem unusual to you yeah. but yeah all right we're gonna take a little break richard barr is in studio and he's written a couple of books the one we're kind of chatting about is those people the true character of the homeless if you have a question you would like to ask uh, richard let us know what it is you can send a text message to eight seven seven nine three three two four eight four. i bet you do have a question about when you've encountered someone who is homeless and you've needed advice as to how you could have handled it better or what to do next time. Let us know what that is. 877-933-2484. We'll be right back. So glad to be chatting with Richard Barr. I love his ministry. I love his spirit, his attitude, his love for people. And he reaches out and does ministry with the homeless and tries to get people reconnected into homes and just meets them where they're at. As a matter of fact, tonight when he leaves the studio, he's racing to help serve dinner under a bridge outside in Minneapolis. And, of course, it's chilly and wet and kind of cold here tonight. So that's uh, quite an act of love. Now, last time he was on, I had a listener contact me and... He was homeless, but he was listening to Faith Radio, and he wanted to get in contact with Richard. So I texted Richard, and I said, Richard, I got a listener that would like to talk to you. Richard, tell me what happened. Yeah, so we connected Mm -hmm. um, by phone, and we talked, and uh, we decided to get—I wanted to meet him face-to-face. So I found out where he was at 
And I think a couple of days later, we met in a restaurant over in St. Paul and had a nice long dinner. He kind of told me his whole story. And I connected him with some resources, some things that he wasn't aware of, which helped um, help to a degree. Uh, but this is a fellow that he does struggle with some mental illness. He's not, he's not dangerous, but he, he's got some things and I'm not a doctor, so I couldn't, I couldn't tell you exactly what the things were, but, but by his own admission, he struggled with some, some mental illness Mm -hmm. and his extended family was estranged from him. There were, uh, there had been a number of deaths in the family and, uh, He's living life without a net. I'm trying to think. He was probably, I think he's in his mid-30s. Okay. Probably. So he's a fully grown person and um, nobody there to care for him to help pick him up and guide him. He now is not in uh, Minnesota any longer. He's in another state. He's been living in the shelter system, still struggling. But he and I have been corresponding by email and it's difficult for me to be able to do anything more than just, I just said, Hey man, you know, you got a friend for life in me. So it's like, if you want to call me, you want to email, I'm always happy to connect with you and do what I can to try to encourage you. Mm, It's a beautiful story. Thanks for doing that. Thanks for Mm -hmm. connecting with him. And what a wonderful, uh, yeah, wonderful story. All right, Richard, let's um, talk about some of the things that we need to be prepared for um, in terms of reaching out, dealing with people who are homeless, uh, Patience, I would imagine, is one of them. Patience? Patience. Having patience with, yes. <laughs> with homeless? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, homeless people have a tremendous amount of patience in general. Okay. You know, you think about, I don't know about you, when I'm in the checkout line, I'm always kind of scanning to see which one's going to be the shortest one and ducking into that. Well, if you're homeless, there's one line <laughs> for everything. Yeah, that's true. And all you do is wait. So... <laughs> so, where do you want to go with that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. What about? Um, tell me more about. Th- let's talk about the people that you know who are homeless. Oh, wh- what is their gratitude like? Are they are they, even, are well, they grateful? Even your or questions are, they... are interesting because they're they're painting things with a pretty broad brush. Well, these I, are individuals. I of course, of yeah. course. I guess what I'm saying is. Maybe think of an individual, and is that person full of gratitude? Are they angry? Are they whatever you give, they wish they had more? Um, I guess that's what I'm going at. I'll tell you what I'm surprised about. <clears throat> so we, we've had some new volunteers at the breakfast recently, uh, and so I've been kind of going along to acclimate people to what we do. Mm-hmm. So this is 5.30 in the morning, and you've got people getting up that stayed in a shelter that slept on a really thin mat or worse, uh, in a room with over 100 other people and get up and come to our breakfast. And I've had our volunteers remark to me how surprised they are at how gracious people are and thankful for a bowl of oatmeal or grits or cold cereal. Nice. So when I do a debrief with them, they're like, man, I can't believe how like kind and gracious people were. And they said, thank you. And they were patient. And so our volunteers were surprised by the reaction that they got from our guests. Meanwhile, I'm screaming at the waitress because my goat cheese omelet isn't right. Goat cheese. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a question from a listener. How do I get over feeling like I'm enabling when I give to the homeless? I currently have little shoebox kits filled with snacks, a welcoming card, and a Bible verse socks and some toiletries like deodorant and toothpaste that I give out when I come upon a homeless person. I know I'm helping them out, but I also feel like I'm enabling them to continue waiting for ha- handouts. Wow. Well, this is a high achieving listener. I this mean, it's very much so. Yeah. yeah. These well are my done. listeners. These well are my done. listeners, Richard. Yeah. Well, yeah, you've got some high achieving yes, listeners. I do. This is, well, first of all, kudos to the, uh, the preparation. I think that's probably the key thing is be prepared. I try to leave it with people where I think it's a very personal decision in terms of the accountability that you feel like you have when you give something away to a homeless person. So, for instance, I I, I mentioned I give away, um, you know, fast food gift cards. I also know there's a street value for those very same cards of $2. Mm -hmm. So you can get get two bucks, you can swap the McDonald's card off for two bucks from somebody or a couple of cigarettes. So I already know that. Okay. So... You're streetwise, though. Yeah, well, I'm just saying, so at what point, at what point am I remain accountable. You know, I'm not giving them cash in this case. I'm mm-hmm. giving them a, a, a gift card that I think is going to be exchanged for food that may not be. Mm-hmm. So I've made the decision generally at that point that, that, that they're fully grown human beings and they're accountable for what they choose to do with what I give them. 
Doesn't it give them a valid reason to go into a McDonald's, though, or a restaurant that you've chosen that, that has a gift card that they can get a breakfast sandwich and maybe use the bathroom and sit and warm up a little bit? Yeah. Isn't that valuable as well? It is It is indeed. I'm just saying that that uh, if somebody's a hustler and they take the gift card that I give them and they oh, go sure. swap it out for sure. a couple of cigarettes, That's their... did I enable them? No. No. So I've I've chosen to decide that in that case not. Mm-hmm. And I've given cash. I've been in other cities where I haven't been prepared, and I, I haven't had stashes of things with me. And I've just felt moved. Like I look at somebody, and I'm like, "Yeah, man, I'm going to give this guy some cash." And I'm going to, but I'm going to take some time and visit with a, him or her or whatever. And um, I don't do that all the time, but I have done it. Mm-hmm. Another listener said, "Thanks for having Rich on. I also serve the breakfast, and really have learned much from Rich." We often see him praying with people, hugging people, big smile for everyone. He has helped me put aside my prejudices and open my heart. I love that he's helped me to hear his call. Hmm. So we have some common fans, you and I, apparently. Well, yes. Yeah, that that would be true. (laughs) That would be true. Wow, that's sweet. Isn't that that nice? That is. Yeah. That's encouraging. Yeah. So do a little pep talk for people that, you know, would be just uh, moving the needle in their lives if if they said, no, I can go try this. You know, this is a great time of the year to think about. We do get a uh, lift in volunteers I bet. during the holidays. And, and I think justifiably so. I think people's hearts turn to thinking about the needs of others. Uh, it's a, this is a great time to, I think, step into deciding to serve other people. And it doesn't have to be the homeless. It could be the elderly or uh, children or any other, any population you would consider to be a vulnerable population. Um, I mean, we're really called to serve Jesus said, you know, the least of these, you've done this to me. And, and uh, we really, uh, we're, we're called to serve and love other people. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I, God's given me an uncommon gift where he's broken my heart over people that a lot of people think are despicable. And I think of that as a gift because not many people have that. So that's what I exercise. But uh, the last thing I would want to do is chase around a bunch of toddlers in some sort of a preschool or something that that's just not me but that would be <laughs> but that would be somebody else's calling right exactly yeah another listener said i started making bags full of toiletries and snacks for homeless is there something that i should or should not include uh, yeah um i love the personal care items i think mm-hmm. those are good socks are super popular and you can go to one of the big box stores and buy like a 10 pack of socks mm-hmm. for a buck or less mm-hmm. a sock, so they're pretty inexpensive. Um, I love to put a little track in there just because I, I feel like I want to try to spread the gospel, and so I try to leverage that. They may keep it or not. Um, I think non-perishable, simple food items are great, like beef sticks or um, you know granola bars, mm-hmm. things like that. Most there, there are many homeless that don't eat pork. You know, if somebody has a, a faith, deal with that. So we never serve pork at any of the things that we do. So I'd stay away from that. Yeah, but little snacks that can have some nice long shelf life, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah indeed. Yeah. So, uh, obviously, listeners all over the country, so if they're feeling inspired and they're not in Minneapolis where they could come help you, uh, what would be a, a thing to do? Who would I call? Where would I try to get involved? Well, the great thing is with the Internet, it's super easy, right? Yeah. I mean, you can Google, you can put in a uh, homeless shelter, name of your city, okay, right? And stuff's going to start popping up. And you'll have to do a little bit of sleuthing and clicking around before you can find a phone number or link. But um, I've served in shelters in other cities. I've got lots of friends that do similar things that I do. I can tell you that everybody is typically looking for some sort of volunteers. If you're going to try to serve with your entire family and your kids on Christmas Eve and you get a hold of the Salvation Army on the 20th of December, they're probably going to tell you they don't have room. Right. So I'll plan ahead a little bit, but um, it's 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 easy to find opportunities to serve the homeless. Yeah. Just and, through Google. And not just point towards a specific holiday, but try to make it part of your lifestyle. you got to begin somewhere. Every yeah. journey starts with the first step, right? Yeah. So. yeah. Richard, you inspire me always. It's nice to hear that you are con- continuing to do your your great work. Oh, hey, book plug. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Barnes & Noble is doing a book signing. Really? Some of those. Yeah, can you believe For that? For you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to believe. Yeah? Yeah, so check this out. The Saturday before Christmas. Isn't that amazing? That's At the Maple Grove, Maple Grove Barnes & Noble, 
That's uh, one awesome. To one to three. I'm going to try to come. I'll heckle. <laughs> Look forward to that. Count on that. Yeah. yeah. I'll, Thank have you. A, I'll have a panini with some goat cheese on it ready that for you. That would be nice. You're going to make friends with me then. <laughs> All right. Richard Barr has been my guest. Richard, B-A-H-R dot com. You can go check it out. 